this. What's worse than a happy Philadelphia sports fan? Ah, trick question. There's nothing worse. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning from Philadelphia. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. And no, I did not come all the way over here to the wrong end of the Commonwealth to cover game three of the World Series that will take place here tonight at Citizens Bank Park. Uh, nor would I if I were, you know, already living here. I'm just not into playoff baseball that doesn't involve the Pirates. And thus, I am just not into playoff baseball. But the people here are going nuts. Now, they've also got their 7-0 and Eagles. They've got the Flyers, who are really are expected to be a terrible team this year, sitting at least temporarily in first place. And, of course, they've got their Phillies, and that is the leading attraction right now in town, as you can imagine. Uh, they had that unbelievable comeback in Game 1, in Houston, weren't able to pull off a comeback that would have been required of similar scope in game two. But here they are. Here they are. They're in the World Series. And they're in the World Series after an 87 win regular season. And after absolutely nobody anywhere gave them a chance to win the World Series, even after they'd qualified for the playoffs. Which leads yet again to this discussion, and I bring this up quite a bit, about the playoffs being luck and how you just need to get in. You need to just have an opportunity. That's what the Phillies got for themselves. From there, you get some players hot, get yourself good enough pitching, get yourself hitting that's timely, uh, that's... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for here when it's a chemical reaction and so forth, where it just kind of everybody's hits seem to feed off the other guys. It's something that you hear baseball players talk about a lot. It's difficult to quantify. But when you come up with the kind of rallies that the Phillies have in these playoffs, you're feeling pretty good about yourself when you go to the plate as the next guy up. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a really, really important thing in these best of short series or heading into the best of seven world series. The Phillies right now have won a game and lost a game. They have as much a chance as the Astros do to win everything. And they did it with an 87 win regular season that I'd love to tell you would be could be or even should be the template for the Pirates, but it really isn't. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. The Phillies had some good players come up from their system. They've done some good developmental work. But they also went out and got Bryce Harper. They also went out and got Kyle Schwarber. And they benefited immensely, as much as any team really in the sport, from the whole launch angle thing. In fact, the guy that I cite most often as the ultimate launch angle player is Schwarber because Schwarber, his batting average sits around, you know, 205, 210, whatever it happens to be. And everybody who's still basing their offensive evaluations primarily on batting average, and I know there aren't many that are still doing that, are going to look at Schwarber and say that he stinks. But then when you add up all these home runs, uh, his on-base percentage is always healthy. All the runs that he pushes across the plate, he's an incredibly valuable player. Harper is a, a lot more than that. 
But Harper is also a guy that's going to be a lot more about hitting the ball out of the park than he is hitting for average. The Phillies did that. They went out and they spent a zillion dollars to get these two guys and a couple others. And good for them. That's the part of the equation that the Pirates won't ever do. I'm convinced of that. I'm not even saying that in some sort of uh, cynical way. I'm not saying that as Bob Nutting, this and that or whatever. They just won't do it. It won't happen. I don't know that it would happen under other ownership. I really don't. My belief is that the way the Pirates will get into the next World Series, meaning theirs, and I'll wait until you stop laughing. Are you done? Okay, cool. The way they'll get into it would be a lot more like the way we've seen the Rays get in, which is they just have so many talented young guys that they don't know what to do with them. They're tripping all over each other uh, from Greensboro to Altoona, from Altoona to Indy, from Indy to Pittsburgh, and it's a big competition and everything else. This is the stuff that's in Ben Charrington's dreams. No part of which ever involves bringing in some big outside free agent. If they're going to pay anybody, it's going to be paying someone like Brian Hayes or if they can get something done, ideally, with Brian Reynolds. But it's not going to be from the outside. The Rays will once in a while go to the outside. But it's always some kind of like Charlie Morton type move where they just they see a potential bargain somewhere. And they'll sign him for a year and $10 million. You'll go, what the heck are the Rays doing? And then within two or three months, you found out what the heck the Rays were doing. The Pirates can do that if they are run smartly. And if they ever develop even a single aggressive bone in their body to, I I don't know, to do something to finish the job. You know, whatever that happens to be, pay somebody something. It can't be avoided entirely. Now, the other part of this equation, and the part that nobody would want to bring up in a dialogue like this, is that the Astros are, yeah, (laughs) the Astros are are not a Phillies-like example. The Astros uh, are a dominant baseball team. The Astros should, that's should, win this series, although it It's got to be pointed out that in this format, the 2-3-2, the next three are here in Philadelphia. But to expect the Pirates to ever get to the point where they're, you know, paying a Justin Verlander and locking up a bunch of these other guys, uh, that's that's tough. That's where the, the inequities of baseball just come in and say, okay, that's enough. You have to cut this conversation off. And you know what? I'm going to do that right now anyway. When we come back, J1Q... from Ed Romsberg, who asks, well, the Pirates have earned their myths or their perceptions over the years. This is, of course, Ed referring back to last week's uh, five-day series uh, in which I attempted to dispel myths related to the Pittsburgh Baseball Club. Ed continues, the Pirates have four winning seasons and three playoff game wins in the last 30 years, all of those in one season. They have not been to a league or a world championship series in 43 years. The owner of the Pirates since 2007 has not run the team as a legitimate sports franchise. They also have years and years of poor player drafting and development. When they do get lucky with a good player, he is traded for prospects that mostly never pan out. So, why should anyone think they will win another pennant again? Ed, you're free to think what you want. Um, I'm free to think what I want, which is generally the theme of this program. My view on this is that it can be done. I've laid out, uh, hopefully, some specific and convincing paths in that regard. I never expect everyone to agree with anything. I 
do want to say, though, that there's one part of what you said there that I just really, really want to throw back. And that's the very first sentence there, the very first sentiment that you expressed. Well, the pirates have earned their myths or perceptions over the years. Um, no, nobody earns having things spoken, written, whatever about them that are untrue. Now, maybe this is just the reporter in me speaking. I break out in hives when I see, hear, or read something that I know is untrue. I will react to it. I'm goofy like that. I'm like that in public. If I'm on the subway and I hear someone five seats away from me say something that I know for a fact is wrong, there's a really good chance I'm going to be that awkward individual who jumps in and says, whoa, no, that's not true at all. Now, sometimes when I do that, as related to the pirates, as I've said, people will take that as defending the pirates. No, if you ever want to attack any position, if you ever want to go at any argument full throttle, you're always best armed with facts. And if you go at somebody with things that aren't facts, it's super easy for them to discount everything that you say, including the facts. And I am telling you this based on experience, meaning with the pirates. When they hear stuff like Bob Nutting's a billionaire or Bob Nutting is doing this or that, and there are certain components to that, including the billionaire thing, that just aren't true, it kind of empowers them. Why do you think, and I've shared this with listeners and readers over the last couple of years, that the pirates get ultra sensitive whenever I say or write something specifically as it relates to, let's say, you know, player development or drafts that didn't pan out or well, more player development. They really, really hate that. And I don't bring it up to pick scabs with them. I'll bring it up when it's pertinent. But when I do, believe you me, it makes its way back to me. Whereas they'll never say a thing about, you know, Bob nutting this or that or whatever, including from, from Bob himself. If you know something isn't true, why would it bother you? You know, I mean, I guess to some extent, you know, you don't want anybody lying about you or whatever, but it's not the same as somebody hitting you with a fact that hurts. So that's why I do that. That's why I don't like this idea that, well, they're the pirates and they're evil, so I can say anything about them. What you followed that with, Ed, was a list of actual, confirmable, indisputable facts, and that's the stuff that matters. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do this again tomorrow. Thank you.